Hello peoples. In today's video, we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm normally going to do in-game videos to get people excited for all the things and features that you can do in Star Citizen. But sometimes CIG will do things that just leave me, quite frankly, baffled and scratching my head. The Ship Showdown is an example of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over it real quick and give you my thoughts. You can agree, you can disagree, but whatever you do, leave a comment in the comments section below after the video uh, so that I can you know, get some feedback from you guys. Maybe I'm just reading too much into this. Maybe you agree with me. I don't know. Let's find out. So obviously, uh, we're already on round two, at least part way through round two when I did this video. Uh, however, I want to highlight a couple things first. The first round choices, as far as what CIG decided to put up for matchups between the ships, um, I don't know. I, I just, I don't get the logic behind it. So the ship showdown is basically a popularity contest and it really comes down to how many people own this ship in game and if they want to see a new skin, paint, whatever you want to call it, uh, added to their beloved ship. Um, that's what it looks to me to be. Maybe I'm off, but we'll see. My biggest issue though is what we get to pick from and what gets matched up against what. And this is dictated by CIG in round one. And it will basically dictate how the remaining rounds go and really ultimately who's going to be the champion. Or I should say which ship is going to be the champion. And if you don't believe me, just hear me out and let's look at how they've done these matchups. So in round one, we had the Fury versus the Arrow. Now the Fury is a snub fighter. It doesn't have a quantum drive. It is basically a one trick pony in that it only does one thing. It does fighter combat. It can do it fairly well when in a group. I personally have one. I like the ship. I think it's fun, but it requires a parent ship to get it from one side to the other of the system. And CIG decided to put this up against the Arrow, which is arguably uh, one of the best light fighters in the game, has a quantum drive, has a storage space for your uh, rifle, and even uh, uh, a little storage space for, uh, you know, incidentals like food and medical supplies, right? So to put the Fury up against the Arrow, at least in my opinion, is kind of weird. It just, it doesn't make sense. Um, it would have been nice to see the Fury go up against another uh, snub fighter, but it didn't. Now, the Arrow won, as you can see in round two, uh, and I believe that's because the vast majority of people own Arrows versus Furies. I'm not saying the Fury isn't a popular ship. I'm sure a lot of people bought the Fury, but I'm also sure those same people probably have an Arrow, and the number of people that own Arrows outweighs the number of people that owns the Fury. Same thing for the Scorpius versus the Redeemer. It doesn't make sense to me to put the Scorpius up against the Redeemer because the Scorpius um, is a heavy fighter. The Redeemer is a gunship. Everything that the Scorpius can do, the Redeemer can do better, in my opinion. And the looks of the Redeemer, well, that's a you either like it or you hate it type mentality. Me personally, I find the Redeemer a good looking ship, so I own one. I also own a Scorpius, but I can do more things in the Redeemer, and you only have one extra crew over the Scorpius, right? Two versus three in order to get basically the full firepower of the Redeemer to be realized. I'm not going to count the tail gun as being necessary in a Redeemer. Um, but you can definitely run higher level missions with a Redeemer that you might have a problem with in a Scorpius. I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying the average player is probably not going to like taking a Scorpius up against a Hammerhead in ERTs. A Redeemer going up against a Hammerhead in ERTs is not going to have much of a problem. It will eat Hammerheads all day long. So that's kind of like why I find this matchup a little odd. I would have liked to have seen the Scorpius go up against something like the Hurricane. That, to me, anyway, seems to be, you know, a, a more um, evenly matched type of matchup. 
okay? So as we go down the list, same thing. We have a reclaimer that goes up against the vulture. So the reclaimer is basically the top tier salvage ship going up against the vulture, which is the entry level salvage ship. Now, I didn't say it was an entry level ship. I said it was an entry level salvage ship. Okay, there's a difference there. Um, my guess is the vast majority of people own a vulture over a reclaimer. So the vulture wins. Terrapin versus a Carrick. This one really left me scratching my head. The Carrick is arguably the best ship in the game. Extremely popular, has won the ship showdown several times in the past. And it goes up against, again, an entry level scout ship, the Terrapin. Now, I voted for the Terrapin simply because I'm tired of seeing the Carrick win uh, ship showdown after ship showdown. And I own the Carrick. So, again, it's a popularity contest, but I think the reason why the Terrapin probably won this matchup is because a lot of people, like myself, were kind of sick of seeing the Carrick always win. So they knocked it out early in the process. To me, it would have been better to have the uh, Carrick, for example, uh, paired up against maybe a Corsair or a 600i, as both of those ships are supposed to be explorer ships. And maybe the Terrapin paired up against the 400i because the 400i is also an explorer ship. Now they're obviously a little bit further down in this list, but again, it's the matchup that I just don't get. So then we have the Corsair versus the Mercury. Corsair won, obviously, because I believe it's a fairly popular ship. It's possible that more people own the Corsair than the Mercury. Um, I believe the Mercury's opportunity to take uh, the Ship Showdown Champion has come and gone. Uh, when it was first released, it was pretty popular as a smuggling ship. But right now, the flavor of the month anyway is definitely going to be the Corsair, hence it's won. That leads us to this next matchup. This is the current matchup that we have uh, as of this recording, and that is the Constellation Andromeda, again, multi-crewed ship, uh, going up against the Cutlass Black. Now, I'm really, <laughs> I just don't understand this matchup at all. I would have put, if anything, the Constellation Andromeda up against the Corsair, um, or maybe the Constellation Andromeda up against the Redeemer because they're basically both gunships, right? The Constellation Andromeda is a gunship that can do missile spam all day long, can carry cargo, and obviously can multi-crew. It's a decent ship. The Cutlass Black, on the other hand, while it is a popular ship, cannot match the Constellation Andromeda as far as its capabilities. Now, that's my opinion. If you disagree with me, put your comments in the comment section below. Um, but I just don't see this as a good matchup. Um, I'm fairly certain that the Constellation Drummond is going to win that matchup too. Then we have the 400i versus the 600i. Again, you know, multi big multi-crewed ship versus what would be considered a solo ship. Now you can run the 600i solo. I know I've done it. Um, but I just don't see this as being a very good matchup. And then we go down to the last matchup, which is the Cutter versus the 890 Jump. This is where I think the people at CIG were like on crack or something. The Cutter, which is arguably the best and most popular uh, starter ship in the game, right? Cost, well, at the time of its release was like $45, I think. Now I think a package will cost you 60 bucks. Um, going up against the 890 Jump, all right, which is a 900 plus dollar ship that currently right now you can't even get lifetime insurance on because you can't upgrade to it. And if you purchase it, you'll only get maybe at best 24 months insurance on, okay? Now, I'm not knocking the 890 Jump. It's currently the biggest ship that we can play in-game. Uh, you know, discounting, stealing an Idris. Uh, but it's one that you can buy in-game. It's got great firepower. It's a luxury ship. It's got a huge flight deck. You could probably put, I don't know, 
10 or 12 cutters in the flight deck on an 890 jump. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty massive. Uh, maybe, maybe not that many. Um, but you can use an 890 jump to go after ERT hammerheads and melt them, no problem. It's got that kind of firepower, even though it is a luxury yacht. But the Cutter is a much more practical and popular ship. So I can, you know, without too much of a problem, foresee who's going to win that matchup. It'll be the Cutter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go out on a limb here and tell you the Cutter is going to win the ship showdown, hands down. It's kind of preordained if you just think about it. So as we go back up, let's see who's going to win here. We're going to put the cutter in this place, right, with that matchup with the 890 jump. We're going to put probably the 400i over the 600i in this matchup. I'm going to vote for the 600i because I think it's a better ship, but I believe the 400i will beat it because more people own it. Constellation Andromeda, I've already told you who's going to win that one. It'll, it'll be the Constellation Andromeda right here. Uh, we've got the Corsair, the Terrapin, the Vulture, the Redeemer, and the Arrow. All right, so now when we go to the semifinals, who do you think is going to win, the Arrow or the Redeemer? I'm going to tell you the Redeemer is a better ship, but the Arrow, the arrow is more popular, right? So this one, um, probably going to be the Arrow. It's possible the Redeemer will win, but I'm going to put money on the Arrow. Vulture versus Terrapin, that's a no-brainer. Vulture's going to win, okay? Corsair versus what I predict to be the Constellation. Corsair will win that. And then down here, uh, whichever one, the 400i versus the 600 versus the Cutter, well, I'm going to tell you the Cutter's going to win. So it doesn't matter who wins between the 400 and the 600i. The Cutter's going to win that matchup, okay? That means that we have the next matchup which will be you know the cutter versus whoever's going to win up here so if it's the vulture do you think the vulture is going to win the cutter or do you think an arrow is going to beat the cutter now think about it for a minute the number of people that own a starter pack with a cutter on it I think you got to give it to the cutter. So the cutter is going to end up winning ship showdown. And that's kind of like my problem. The way that these matchups were arranged in the beginning kind of dictated who was going to win. So you really don't have much of a vote here because we know what the outcome is going to be. So that's my kind of take on it. Now, again, if you disagree with me or if you think I'm reading too much into it, please put a comment in the comment section below because I'd like to, you know, check myself, basically, make sure I'm not losing my mind here. The other thing that I have a problem with is with CitizenCon's digital package goodie thing that they came out with. So if you don't know, uh, this right here is a screenshot of the digital package that you can get for not going to CitizenCon uh, this year. Instead, you can purchase it. And... This is a list of all the stuff that comes in that goodie pack. So, you know, we've got undersuit, helmet, we've got a trophy, we've got a shotgun. Now, realistically, tell me, how many people out there are using a shotgun to go clear bunkers? If you use nothing but a shotgun to clear bunkers from low, mid, and high tier, you need to leave a comment in the comment section because I want to know how you're doing it. The shotguns in general just are in a bad place. So we're going to get a shotgun for buying this goodies pack. We get some type of headhunter gang relic collectible, which we don't know what it looks like. We don't know what the multi-tool and case are gonna look like. We don't know what the ship plushie is gonna look like. We don't know what the challenger coin is gonna look like. We don't even know what the dragonfly paint is gonna look like. The only thing that we get out of this picture up here is what the suits look like. Now, maybe it's just me, but looking at these suits, this looks like very, very, low effort work here, okay? I'm not knocking the fact that some junior design artist working for CIG made these. I think that's exactly what they should be doing. But if you look at it, to me, it kind of looks like, a, I don't know, kind of looks like an s and version of a sand person from Star Wars looking at the leather face mask and the suit. That's just my opinion. I think if you look at it long enough, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
but we don't know what any of the other goodies look like. Now, normally, this wouldn't be a big problem because in the past, these digital goodies have been, you know, for sale to us for 10 bucks. And if you're into that kind of stuff, knock yourself out, pay 10 bucks, get it, and move on. However, this year, it's 35 US. It's $35 US. I, I don't know what the heck the marketing group is thinking here, but CIG, you, you, you can do better than this. I mean, at best, this package, and again, my opinion, is 10 bucks. You would sell more if you priced it at 10 bucks. $35 for a bunch of unknowns, because we don't even know what they look like yet, and this, these suits and helmets, which are extremely low effort, and again, that's my personal opinion, if you guys think I'm wrong, leave me in a leave the comments down there. You know, say, hey, whoa, wait a minute, Tijax, you're wrong here. These things take hours and hours and hours, and it needs a senior developer graphics artist to do it, which I would find incredibly uh, full of crap to try and push that on anyone. Um, let me know, because maybe I'm I don't know, maybe I'm out of place here. But uh, yeah, these look like pretty low effort things, and to charge thirty-five dollars, I don't know, I got. I got a problem with it. Now, before you say, well, they got to charge something. I'm not saying they can't charge something. $10 would be more appropriate. Okay. But $35. Now, when you consider that this package is going for $35, I want you to just sit back and kind of relax for a minute. And let me show you something. For $10 more, 45 US, you can get yourself an Aurora game package. Okay, a game package to play the game, three months insurance, a hanger, 1,000 UEC. Okay, it, it, it's a game package for $10 more. And by the way, you can generally get these game packages for the same price as this during their sales. But I just want to point that out. So I think the marketing guys... And girls working for CIG need a reality check. They are not going to sell a lot of these. I would be very, 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 very surprised that they sell a lot of these. And if you buy this stuff, good for you. That's I don't think you're going to get much value out of it, but good for you. As a matter of fact, leave it in the comments section of the video if you are going to spend $35 on this digital goodies pack. Because I'm, I'm very curious to know how many people are going to do that. If it was, you know, 10 bucks, I would get it. But 35 Wow. I just, I don't see it. Just don't see it. But maybe I'm wrong. So if I am, leave that comment down there and let me know where I went wrong. Uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments. I'm really interested to see and hear what you guys think. Maybe I'm out of line here, but uh, this just really left me scratching my head. So as always, till next time, take care.